Good evening. Good evening, Miss. How are you? Fine, and you? Fine. I I don't uh, I don't do a platform today. Oh, don't worry. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe can you uh, help uh, with us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in the platform is other exercise news. Okay, if you have troubles with some sections, you can write the sections in the tab and we are going to see the exercise and I will help you to complete the exercises. So you can write uh, the, the section and we are going to have like some minutes in which we are going to talk about the platform and the exercises. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So let's begin. We are in week number two. We are uh, starting a new week and we are in the middle, almost in the middle, of the course. So ending in this week, we are going to have just two more weeks to end a day in the course. And we are going like, the time is uh, running, running, running. So we are going to start right now because we have another uh, topic that has to be with tenses and with uh, structures and all of the things. So, we are going to begin in the last week, we were talking about simple present and all of the things. And now we are going to talk about, let's see, I'm going to share the screen with you. And we have here the phrase and the topic. So here we have the phrase for today. Let me show you the whole picture. So it says, your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. So we are going to construct our future right now. It's time to complete the things that we want to do for our life. It can be a hard time, but we are working for our future. And that is the important thing that we are working, not waiting. So. The topic for today is present perfect continuous. We are going to talk about present perfect continuous and also you know that we are going to talk about general information, uses, structures, and some examples. And if we have time, we are going to complete some exercise. If we don't have time, I'm going to send to you the exercise that you are going to use for practicing. Because in that case, it is necessary to uh, know if we are um, understanding the topics or if we have some trouble um, doing the exercises. So we are going to start with this topic. And as I, I was saying, uh, if you have troubles with the platform, you can ascend to the task, the section in which you are having trouble and we are going to uh, we are going to see the exercise and, and what are the possible answers that you have for that section. So, in that case, you can write if you are uh, you are having trouble with the platform because we are here to help you to complete the exercises. So, perfect uh, present perfect continue. What is this and how can we use it? for conversation. So the first thing that we need to know is the present continuous tense show that something started in the past and is continuing at the present time. So in that case, uh, remember that, let me move to the topics that we were seeing, that is this one. Go, go, go to the beginning. So here, let me see in which we have that information that is in this one, I guess, this one. So in this information, let's see, it says 
that the simple question it is used to show that a completed action took place at a specific time in the past. So in that topic, we were talking about the action that we did in the past and ends in the past. In this case, with this one, that is the new topic that we are going to develop, is actions that begin, actions that begin in the past but continues in the present. So in this case, it is not ending. So it says, the present continues But something started in the past and is continuing at the present time. So it's at the present perfect the present perfect continues is form using the construction and we are going to see what is the construction that we are going to use with these tens. And we have here the construction that is the following. And it says, have or have, depending on the pronoun that we are using, has or have been plus the present participle the present participle that is the root of the verb plus the ing. So that is the construction or the structure that we are going to use for these um, for this structure. And it says that we have an example. Let's see what is the example. And it says I. In this case, we are going to use have. I have been, and we have the verb reading. I have been reading one MP for a month now. So in that case, we are saying that we are performing this action, but I begin reading this um, book a month ago. But it's obviously that I am not finishing the book because it's kind of long. Entonces, para este tipo de acciones que comienzan en un tiempo específico en el pasado, pero que aún no terminan, son las que nosotros vamos a utilizar con esta estructura, que es el present perfect continuous. Something that is far in the past, but is happening even in the present time. For example, um, I am working as a teacher since 2019, but now I am still working as a teacher. So in that case, it's something that um, begin in the past, but is continuing in the present because I am still a teacher. So it says in this sentence, yes, in the present perfect continuous verb tense, convey that reading word in peace is an activity that began sometime in the past and is not yet finished in the present. Recently and lately, so we have more information. Recently and lately, I'm going to mark this word, Recently and lately, 
are words that we often find with verbs in the present. So it says that we are going to use recently and lately in this structure. So we are going to see an example of this and why we are using this kind of words with this structure. So we have the example and it says the first one, Mia has been competing in a fluid competition recently. Mia has been competing in flute competition recently. So we can add some compliments. In this case, it is not necessary to write the whole sentence. In that case, we can uh, think about uh, the complement of the sentence. Okay, um, I'm having trouble with the internet connection because it's raining here and it's kind of weak, but um, give me a second and I will do something to improve the internet connection. So give me a moment. So it is supposed that it's going to be better this way, but we're going to see. So I'm going to share again the screen. Okay, so I was saying that in this case, uh, we have this sentence in which we're saying that Mia um, has been competing in fluid competitions but we can add something at the end. And in that case, it is not necessary to write that compliment. And it says, and she will continue to do so. Así que lo que decimos es que eh, podemos pensarlo, ¿verdad? En este caso no es tan necesario que lo exterioricemos. Mia ha estado compitiendo en eh, competencias de flauta, ¿verdad? In that case, it's going to tell me, ah, uh -huh, it's just one with eh, one letter. So, ha estado eh, participando recientemente en estas competiciones y llegamos a pensarlo. Y lo va a continuar haciendo por cierto tiempo. Para in that case, it is not necessary to add the whole complement or the whole, the, the whole idea that we have about the situation. Another example, I haven't been feeling well lately. I haven't been Mm. It's trying to have the connection, but it is not working. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me. 
or something like this because it's saying that it's trying to have the connection. So it says, I haven't been feeling well lately. And what is happening uh, in that case? It says that, and I am sick now because i was not feeling really well but now i know why i was not feeling well because now i am sick Okay. Okay, it's kind of complicated in that situation, but we are going to continue because it is it's going to rain again. So then we have another example and it says recently I've been I been misplacing my wallet and keys. And why is happening that? Because I'm sure I am sure I sure do not um don't know where they are. So in that case, I am not secure about uh, the place in which I am uh, putting my wallet and my keys. Of course, not all verbs are, um, are compatible with a continuous action. Some examples of such verbs are to be, to arrive, and to own. So in that case, uh, remember that I was saying that when we are using the continuous um, a structure, because in this case, it is not like just a present perfect continuous, it's about the, um, the whole continuous tenses, uh, there are many verbs that we cannot use with the continuous that are the steady verbs that in the case um, is talking about senses, uh, feelings, and all of those things. So in that case, to be, it's not compatible. Okay, I will do something. I will um, turn off the camera. Uh, because I think it's going to help, but I don't know if it's going to help right now. So I am going to have the camera just like this. So we are going to continue with that, with something like that. Give me a second. Okay, 
we were saying that we have some verbs that um, we cannot use with the um, the continuous form. So in that case, we are saying that we have a verb to be that is not like the kind of verb that we are going to use with that structure because it is not like we can write um, the verb to be with the ing form. So in that case, we're not going to use the verb to be and also some examples as to arrive or to own that um, we're not going to write it like that. So we're going to see some examples in which um, we can see uh, that they don't look very well in the sentence. I guess this one is going to be like um, a very chaotic and complicated uh, session. So I'm so sorry for that. So we have here the examples of a bird that we cannot use with the continuous action. And we have the example. And it says, the, this one is the incorrect one, in which we're going to use the verb in a wrong way. And the example says, I have been Owning my Mazda since 2007. So in that case, this one is incorrect. This is structure. And the cover form is I have owned my Mazda since 2007. So in this case, we are using this structure with this verb and not the, the first one. So now we know that in this case, we are using this structure to um, talk about actions that uh, begin in the past. But also we are talking about that these actions are um, and of course, so, uh, in this case, we are saying that we have this structure for actions that happen in the past or begin in the past, but now are continuing in the present, and maybe they are going to uh, continue in the future. So in that case, we are going to talk about action that we can continue doing for some time as the examples that we have in which we were saying that uh, we uh, we haven't been feeling well, now we are sick because in that case, we are following that same structure. 
So we are going to see the structures or the way in which we are going to construct these sentences. So remember that we need structures for positive, negative, and for questions. So in that case, we are going to see the structures and then we are going to see some examples of those structures. So we are going to see a structure and we have the number one that is positive. And remember that we have the structure. I, I mean, I'm going to change it because it's not going to be separated. So here. Excuse me, Miss. Tell me. Uh, I can speak in Spanish. Tell me. Ok, es que no aparece nada en la pantalla, entonces su internet como que se, se está yendo cada rato y, y se interrumpe la, la proyección. Yes, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. That's, that's correct. It's because of the internet. Thank you so much. So I was saying structures, we have a positive one. And remember that we need to have our um, subject. In this case, we have the pronoun. I, you, he, she, it, we, they. So then how can we use this structure for a positive sentence? We are going to ask, has been or have been in some cases. So I has been or I have been. So in that case, we're going to use I has been and we're going to use the verb play. Playing. I has been playing. You have been playing. He has been playing. She has been playing. It has been playing again. And the last two that we have been playing and the last one they have been playing so in that case we can say that we have the following structure and we have the pronoun or the subject plus has or have been plus the verb with ing ending. So that is the structure that we have for positive sentence. I mean, I mean, I mean, let me see. So tell me, uh, um, I mean, let me take this. In this case, uh, you know, that is like this. In that case, it's just a mistake. So in that case, we have the structure that we are creating for the positive sentence. So we have has or have been plus the verb with ing form. So, for the negative one is almost the same. Uh, just in that case, we are going to use the not. As in the other uh, structures that we have, just in some cases when we are using the auxiliary is going to be different. But in this case, we are going to use the same structure. So we are just going to add the not. So negative, a structure or for negative sentence. Again, 
We are going to write the subject I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. Again, we have the subject. Plus, and we are going to add the structure. In that case, I have, and in the middle, we are going to use not. I have not been, again, playing. And that's the structure. So here we have have or has not been plus the verb with ing ending. And again, we're just going to have the same. You have not been. He has not been she has not been we have not been laying and the last one they have not been playing so we have two structures positive negative and now we are going to see the um the question how can we create question with this structure so we are going to see And we have question here. Question. So in that case, we are going to change the things a little bit. Remember that when we are creating questions, in some cases we change the places. And in that case, it's just the thing that we are going to do, change some places. So we have for the first thing, has been or have been. That is the beginning. Plus the subject, plus verb with ing, plus the question mark. So we are going to construct. First, they have been, then they have, I mean, they have been, and then they have been with the pronoun. So for the first, has been, she, he playing, has been he playing, then I'm going to do it like a list, like this one. Then, has been she playing? Has been it playing? And then we are going to use the have been. Have been I playing? And the last one have they, have been they. So we have the example for the question. And we have example number one and it says,
they have been playing football. That is a positive sentence. And we change the places when we are creating questions. And it says, in that case, if you can see the structure here, in the first uh, here, in this one, you're just saying the structure as the, um, like we are creating the group. First has been and then have been. But we are going to complete that structure. That structure is not correct. There are like, um, we are just saying the, um, the structure in that case. Esa estructura no está completa. Why it is not complete? ¿Por qué no está completa? ¿Quién sabe por qué no está completa esa, esa estructura? ¿O por qué no está bien escrita esa estructura de arriba? Because it don't have a uh, complement or uh, the action that is doing uh, the complete action. I don't the know. Action. The mm -hmm. And what else? It is that the the structure that we can use. It is like that. I think uh, you have to you have to put the the subject after has or have. How to be? Oh, that's correct. We need to put the subject in the middle of have been. In that case, we just have the structure, but we need to change the subject, right? So in that case, how can we do that? We are going to take have at the beginning, have, then we are going to correct and we are going to write the subject in the middle, have they, and then we are going to continue writing. Have they been playing football? And we have the question mark. Por eso, la, la oración es que estaban arriba no, es, no tenían como mucho sentido, ¿verdad? Have been they playing? Mm. Por eso no estaba. En esta parte solo lo pusimos como la estructura en sí, pero en este caso nosotros necesitamos partirlo. Has, have, subject, been, plus the verb with the ing eh, form. So in that case, we correct the sentence in the example. Very good. So we are going to create just one example, uh, some examples. I, I'm going to write some examples of this structure and then we are going to see some exercises in which you are going to correct the um, the structure that I'm going to write in the sentences. Voy a escribir unos ejemplos y luego les voy a poner unos ejercicios donde ustedes van a ir corrigiendo o poniendo los elementos que le faltan. I guess I can... I can start the video again. So I hope it is not going to go to another place. So example. And we have number one. It says, my son, in this case, we are not using the pronouns. In this case, we are using another subject. My son has been living, has been living, in London for three months. So in this case, we are using the structure has been living because we are talking about him. So in that case, we can change the subject, my son, for he. So in that case, we are using has been living. Then we have another one and it says we, a plural, 
we have been playing football since morning. And maybe we are going to continue doing that action because we are still playing football. Next one, but first let me mark this. Next one. You have been telling a lie. You have been telling a lie. Here we have. Next one. Number four. He has been preparing for an annual exam. He has been preparing for annual exam. Then he has. We are using the singular plural and third person rules. Number five. She has been. She has been driving a car. Number six. Here we have a question. Has then the subject has he been going to extra classes? So we are going to mark just the instructor has been going. Here. Has he been going to extra classes? Number seven. They have been singing the sun on a stage. I'm going to write all the exercises and I mean the examples, and then I'm going to mark the structure. Number eight, the sun has been risen to the east. Number nine, we have been knowing each other. He has been getting up early in the morning. Number 11, I have been speaking English for five months. My friend has been watching a movie.
And the last one, she has been eating. A healthy meal. So we have here the, uh, the sentences or the examples using the structure. In this case, we're not using negative one. In this case, just um, positive and one question. So I'm going to mark these ones because I'm going to write the exercises in which you're going to complete the sentences using the structure. So we have here the structure has been watching, have been having, has been reading, and has been eating. That is the last one. So now I'm going to write the exercises and um, it's time to write the sections in which you are having troubles on the platform because um, when I give you time to read the sentences, I will help you with the section in which you have a uh, trouble. So uh, you can write the section on the top um, to search for the um, exercises and read uh, the options that we have in the exercise. So let's see. We have just 10 sentences.
So we have two more sentences to end the sentence that we have for the exercise. Then I will give you some time to read and find the answers. And then you are going to tell me what are the answers for this um, sentence. And I will write on the document to have a big complete sentence. So we have number eight. And this is the last one. So we have 10 sentences in which we're going to write the structure that is, has, or has been, and the verb with the ing. So we have number one, I, this novel seems Saturday. Number two, the sales manager, the target of the sales for many years. Number three, she, to learn French for two months. Number four, I at home for three months. Five, he satisfactory progress sends his admission, his admission to the college. Number six, I for you since three o'clock. Seven, he has shirt for two months. Eight, the couple at the bench for two hours. Nine, Harris, 10 pages since morning. And number 10, Rita at a coffee shop for her friends. So when you have the answer, you can tell me and I'm going to write it on the document. For now, you have some minutes to think about the, um, the answer for these sentences. So you can tell me when you are ready if you have the answer for the um, exercises.
So for the first one, what is the answer for the first one? How can a, we write the structure in the sentence number one? I has been reading. Okay. I have been reading. Good. I have been reading this novel since Saturday. Number two. How can we write the structure for the number two? The sales manager has been achieving. Okay. Has been achieving. The target for sales for many years. Number three, she what? Has been tried. She has been to refresh. She has been tried uh -huh. to refresh for two months. Okay. She has been trying to learn French for two months. Good. Number four, I, I have been staying. Oh, good. I have been staying. I have been staying at home. Number five, he, she has, she has been, has been making. She has been uh -huh. making. Good. He has been making. Number six, I, I have been waiting. Mm -hmm. I have been waiting for you since three o'clock. Number seven, he. He has been waiting. He has been waiting. Mm -hmm. Good, he has been waiting. Number eight, the couple. I've been, I've been sitting, sitting. I've been sitting good for two hours at the bench for two hours. Harry, I've been typing. I've been typing good. Ten pages. And the last one, Rita. Rita has, has been, been waiting at a coffee shop. For her good. Rita has been waiting at a coffee shop for her friend. Good, good, good. So we have completed the part of this structure that we were uh, seeing in this uh, session. So we are going to end the session here. I'm hoping that you have a really good night. See you tomorrow, hoping that we have a better connection tomorrow to complete the uh, section in without problems. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.